गुरुर्देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात्म ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा oh. <coughs> in this uh, session we are uh, discussing gita dhyana and after gita dhyana we can go to the study of bhagavad gita so far we had discussed six shlokas now today we will go to the seventh shloka this shloka is a prayer earlier in many shlokas we prostrated Shri Krishna. We salute Sri Bhagavan Veda Vyasa, and uh, we took an oath to follow Bhagavad Gita in our uh, life. Here, in the seventh shloka. we are we are pray this is a prayer what is prayed for see vaadya sharya cha sarvaja mamalam geeta artha gandho utkatam नानाख्यानकेसर हरिकथा संबोधनाबोधित लोके सज्जन षटपदर पेपीयम मुदा भूया भारत पंकज कलिमल प्रध्वंसी न श्रेयसे पाराशर्यवच सरोज ममल गीतागंधोत्कट नानाख्यानकेसर हरिकथा संबोधनाबोधित लोके सज्जन षटपदर पेपीयम मुदा भूया भारद पंकज कलिमल प्रध्वंसी न श्रेयसे ब्रेक दि वर्ड्स फर्स्ट पाराशर्यवच सरोज अमल गीतागंधोत्कट 
നാനാഖ്യാനകേശരം ഹരികഥ സംബോധനാബോധിതം ഹരികഥാസംബോധനാബോധി ലോക്കെ സജ്ജന ഷട്പദൈ അഹര പേപീയമാനം മുദാ ഭൂയാ ഭാരതപങ്കജം കലിമലപ്രധ്വംസി നേയസേ സോ വട്ട് ഇസ് ദി പ്രയർ ഹിയർ പ്രയർ ഈസ് ഭാരതപങ്കജം നേയസേ ഭൂയാ ഭൂയാത് ലെറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കം ഓർ മേ ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കം ഭൂയാത് ലെറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കം ഓർ മേ ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കം വാട്ട് ഭാരത പങ്കജം പങ്കജം ഈസ് ലോട്ടസ് and the bharata pangajam is lotus that is bharat so lotus that is bharatam let it become kalimala pradhvamsi kalimala pradhvamsi means that which will clean or purify all the impurities of kali that which is purifying our all the impurities connected with kali so that is the prayer for what what is the purpose the purpose is naha shreyase naha for our shreyase shreyas is liberation from all bondages liberation from all limitations and shreya say means for that so this is the prayer let this mahabharata remove all the impurities of kali and let it become or let it uh, be an instrument to give us the ultimate liberation from all bondages let us be free this is the prayer we will discuss in detail so here it is said paraha sharya vachaha saroja mamalam saroja means lotus lotus amalam pure amalam means pure without any impurities so there is a pure lotus lotus flower so there is a pure lotus what is that para sharya vachaha parashariya vachaha means 
words of parashadya words of parashadya and who is parashadya parashadya is the son of parashara son of parashara so son of parashara means vedavyasa krishna dvaipayana vedavyasa who wrote mahabharata and of course who wrote all the 18 puranas and who edited the vedas so his words the words of bhagavan veda vyasa the words of krishna dvaipayana vyasa who is a son of parashar his words which is the which is that what is that words it is mahabharata of course all the uh, puranas are words of vyasa but here it is mahabharata parashadya vacha saroja mamalam so it is a, it is a lotus flower what kind of lotus flower amalam pure without any impurities and therefore it will purify the readers those who are studying those who are worshiping mahabharata they also will get purified so that is the that is the greatness of mahabharat amalam saro the pure lotus flower so here the words of bhagavan veda vyasa that is mahabharata is said to be a pure lotus flower parashadya vacha saroja mamalam geetartha gandhotkatam geetartha gandhotkatam that is one word we cannot break in between but to understand let us stay each and every word within that word is a compound word artha means meanings so geeta artha means the meanings of geeta gandha means fragrance of course it means smell but here as uh, uh, we are talking about one flower we can take it as to mean fragrance utkadam means intense utkadam intense so the intense fragrance of the mahabharata is the meaning of gita so this lotus is that is the lotus of mahabharata is having the intense fragrance of bhagavad gita the penetrating fragrance and how it is presented mahabharata nanakhyanaka kesaram nanakhyanaka kesaram kesaram is the spores in the flower or we can say it is stamens it is stamens of the flower or spores 
that is kesara and what is the statements here nana khyanata akhyana is story or parable we can take story so there are many 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 stories and each story is a statement the mahabharata is a that's a big story and within that there are thousands and thousands of stories and the main theme of mahabharata is not a story it is aitihya what happened it is history the main theme of mahabharata is history it is not a story but thousands and thousands of stories are embedded in that theme so nanakhyana ka kesar each and every story that comes as a part of mahabharata is compared to statements of that flower and what is the common natural of those uh, stories those statements sambodhana bodhidam sambodhana bodhidam means that which is presented in the form of question answers one person will approach another it can be a single person or a group of scholars and they will ask some questions or he will ask some questions and the other side will reply so sambodhana plus abodhana so in the form of question answers thousands and thousands of stories are presented here but there is one common feature in all these stories there are thousands of stories but there is a common feature what is that hari katha hari katha sambodhana bodhida all the stories are explaining the greatness of hari hari is ishwara so the the aim of all the stories or the the final message of all the stories is the greatness of ishwara to teach to show that that is the so hari katha sambodhana ho so here a, a lotus flower is presented and what is that that lotus flower is mahabharata and that is the words of bhagavan veda vyasa the son of parashara and that is without any impurities and with the fragrance of bhagavad gita and the fragrance is the meanings of the bhagavad gita and that fragrance is intense to and there are thousands of stories within mahabharata and all these stories are like statements in the or spores in the in the lotus flower 
And all these stories are presented as question answers. But there is a common feature that is all these are uh, explaining or depicting the greatness of Hari. This is Mahabharata. Loke in the world. Loke means in the world. Sajjana Shatpadaihi. Sajjana Shatpadaihi. Sajjana means a virtuous man, man of virtue. And they are compared to Shatpadas. Shatpadas are bees. Honey bees. So by them, Sajjana Shatpadaihi, by honey bees who are virtuous men, Aharaha, Ahaha, Ahaha, means daily. Aharaha means daily. All the days. Ahaha means day. Aharaha means all the days. Pepiyamanam. Pepiyamanam. It is a difficult word, word to translate. The meaning is that which is uh, being drunk by them. That is Piyamanam or uh, Maybe I may be wrong, Piyamanam, Peyamanam. But Pepiyamanam means there is the wish, intense, intense wish within to drink that. So that which is being drunk by honeybees who are virtuous men, how they are drinking or how they are. That wish is there with it. With intense wish, they are drinking the honey. That means that much eagerness is there within virtuous men to study Mahabharata, to chant Mahabharata, to learn Mahabharata. That intense thirst is there with it. And how they are drinking this? Muda. Muda means with happiness. With happiness. Such Mahabharata or that Mahabharata. Bhuyat. Let it become or may it become. But Kalimala Pradhamsi. That which will remove all impurities of Kali. Let it remove all the impurities of Kali. And Bhuyat Nahasrayase. And let it become a tool for the liberation from all limitations or all bondages. So this is the meaning. So this is the prayer. See? So here, first, Parasharya Vachaha is compared to a, a lotus, which is pure without any impurity. That means there is no impurity in Mahabharata. It's a pure lotus flower. 
and the whole of mahabharata is written by bhagavan vedavyasa who is the son of parashar so parashar devachaha saroja mamalam see there are 18 parvas in mahabharata and more than 100000 shlokas are there more than 100000 shlokas are and geeta is having only 700 shlokas so when we compare the whole text of mahabharata geeta is such a small part 700 divided by 1 lakh that is the size of bhagavad gita in mahabharata but it is said the angels fragrance of this flower is bhagavad gita that is the greatness of bhagavad gita so this is the most attractive flower the full bloom lotus flower but that which is giving fragrance is bhagavad gita this shows the greatness of bhagavad gita that fragrance is attracting bees from all the world so it is the utkada gandha utkada is intense gandha fragrance so it shows the greatness of bhagavad gita and there are thousands and thousands of uh, statements and all these are different stories how many stories are there within mahabharata thousands and thousands all are interconnected whenever somebody has some doubt the teacher there will reply with the help of a story so tales and parables are innumerable in mahabharat nanakyanaka kesaram but all are hari katha this is the greatness this is speciality even though there are thousands of stories there is this common feature all these are hari katha hari katha story of hari all are stories of hari so the greatness of hari is conveyed through all these stories who is hari hari is ishwara harati agnyanam harati sarvani papani man who is this pallin ignorance man who is this pallin ignorance and all sins he is hari so ishwara so all these stories are telling the greatness of ishwara and see when many stories are presented of course 
we will be attracted but still it will enter directly into our heart when it is in the form of question answers when ideas are presented in the form of question answers it will directly enter our heart because the questions asked therein will be our own questions so when uh, when we read mahabharata while we read we are reading mahabharata we will become the questioner and we will get answers from different acharyas most practical questions questions of this world most practical and therefore this will enter directly into our heart and this is being drunk by thousands of bees since how many years we cannot say that is continuing is an ongoing process how many artists made many many art forms how many dramas how many dance forms how many music songs and pictures craft works we cannot count for the last 5000 and odd years it is coming and how many stories were written based on mahabharata how many dramas and in the in the modern world how many cinemas it is an ongoing process it will continue because it is uh, it is an everlasting source it won't be depleted so this bees which are compared to bees are here the virtuous men the virtuous men are compared to bees so this bees are daily drinking the nectar the honey from that from that lotus loke sajjana shatpadaihi aharaha pepiya so daily they are drinking the nectar from this lotus flower with hope with all happiness muda muda is happiness the bliss one who is having that happiness within is modi the shabda modi comes from this root having bliss with that mahabharata let it remove or made remove all the impurities impurity sab kali
For what? Why should Mahabharata remove the impurities? It is for our liberation from all bondages. It is prayers. Prayers is the physical well-being. We want that. We must have that. Physical or mundane well-being, we must have. But more than that, as we are human beings, the ultimate goal of human life is liberation from all ignorance or all limitations, all bondages, like the absolute freedom. So this is prayed for. See? So this is the prayer, and it is prayed for here through this shloka. So these are the these are the word meanings. If we are going to explain, it will uh, it will take hours and hours to. But just understand this word meaning and uh, think. Sing it again and again. So this loka, let us chant one more, once more. Parasha Jyavacha Saroja Mamalam Gitartha Ganthot Katam Nana Kyanaka Kesaram Harikatha Sambodhana Bodhitam Loke Sajjana Shatpadai Raharaha Pepiya Mamuda Bhuyad Bharata Pandajam Kalimala Pratina Shreya Se. Here I am not praying for my well being, for my liberation. No. Naha, it is for the whole world. It is not for me, it is for our. Let this remove all the impurities for our liberation from bondage. That is the greatness. So, this is the seventh shloka. And we can go to the eighth shloka in our next city. So if we want to ask anything now, that is the time. Namaste. Namaste Swamiji. The question is from Arun Babuji. Babuji, you can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, namaste Swamiji. Namaste. namaste. Uh, my question is the, the Sri Krishna is told us the Purna Avatara. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have seen in this logo also in many other occasions, he has been termed in different terms like uh, Deva, Bhagavan, Ishwara, and also he is a friend, he is a Grihastha, husband, king. At the same time, he has been uh, many times named as the Paramatma itself, which we know that it is an akarta which uh, he does not do but many other places it is also under the tribunas uh, sri krishna so the question is that during the war field when this advice is given so what is exact role we can consider as the jagat guru at that moment uh, so that that is the confusion yeah. Sri Krishna is uh, portrayed in our Shastras, especially Puranas, as a Purna Purushottam. One who is representing all the Purusharthas, all the manifestation in the fullest form of what? Of all the Purusharthas. 
ಧರ್ಮ ಅರ್ಥ ಕಾಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಸ್ ಆನ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ ಟು ಎಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಆರ್ ರಿಎಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಧರ್ಮ so when we consider shri krishna bhagavan shri krishna as an incarnation to to reestablish dharma in this world then he is a purna purushottam with the embodiment of all the four purusharthas and from the standpoint of a devotee a bhakta he is he is the ishwara the ultimate ishwara he is the ultimate ishwara from the standpoint of a devotee or his uh, the the embodiment of divinity when he is uh, observed from another angle he is a warrior one who is fighting to reestablish dharma from another angle shri krishna is a lover from another angle he is an he is a husband he is a, a father of many children more than 80 from another angle he is an eternal teacher friend enemy child greatest the musician so from which angle we are we that is the question and from his own knowledge or from his, his own realization he is parmat man who is well established in satya chitta nanam for arjuna he was a friend he was a charioteer he was a driver he was a friend he was a best companion and he was acharya greatest teacher so shri krishna was all in one why because he is akshar and imperishable he is limitless when uh, there are many dark clouds in the sky 
And when the sun is not at all shining, we will say today sky is dark. When sun is by bright white clouds, we will say the sky is bright. It is shining bright, but we not see sun. Some days we will say, "Oh, it is. It is a sunny day. So the sky is shining with sun." Smoky sky, pure sky, impure sky, and within the uh, clouds, we will imagine and we will create, we will make many stories, great man of history. And uh, heroes of, of our inner world, we will superimpose on these clouds, and uh, we will see them all in the sky. But sky is without all this. We cannot qualify that. There is no blue sky, there is no bright sky, there is no dark sky. In this, Paramatma is without any quality or uh, any special features. It is the existence absolute. It is the knowledge absolute, it is the bliss absolute. So that is the real form of Sri Krishna. That is Sri Krishna. And from his own realization, that is his nature. That is his true nature. Only some great sages realized that. For example, Narada in the Mahabhagavata realized that greatness. Only a few. See, even after Krishna, Krishna is a universal being. Duryodhana they didn't understand that, they didn't realize that. Yashoda, even after seeing the whole universe within the mouth of Sri Krishna, even after seeing that, he didn't realize who he is. So that is the problem. So many, from many, many levels, people observed and they took that is the that is the real nature of Sri Krishna. But Bhagavan Sri Krishna was above all. And therefore, there is no any type of contradictions in that. There are contradictions when we are taking Sri Krishna in one capacity. See? For example, 
there are uh, there are rules and uh, regulations to be followed in a match in a righteous match there are uh, given rules and uh, when we observe the teachings or activities of sri krishna in the battle of kurukshetra war there are many many situations where we will sit spellbound why sri krishna did so this is against the common rule and regulation of the battle why he asked dharmaputra yudhishthira to tell a lie why he asked bhima to kill duryodhana there are many 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 questions so from normal level we will not get answers because krishna is above such rules and regulations see when the forces of adharma are coming together under the umbrella of uh, power and money all are united together and they are working together to distract the system of righteousness in the world then up to what extent you can go to re establish dharma up to what extent if you are observing the rules and regulations returns in the dharma shastras then the other party also should bind that they also should abide that observe that if there are two parties and one party is observing all rules and regulations and other is violating everything or even if they are outwardly observing but that power of money power of governance all are there then what is the meaning in observing these written rules and code of conduct so this is the thing so shri krishna taught you need not observe this because the other part is not like that so when we observe krishna from a give rules and regulations for written uh, values that we will not be able to uh, digest the individuality or the personality of shri krishna then we will see many many contradictions many contradictions but see gandhari the mother of all dharta rashtras 
she was sure in one thing yataha krishnaha tataha dharma yataha dharmaha tataha jaya prayer krishna from that spot dharma also or and from where dharma originated from there victory will follow she was sure about so he was a bow the books of dharma he was dharma personified he was artha personified he was uh, kama personified he was moksha personified so take krishna as paramatma in the highest level and purna purushottama in the in the world leader then we will have no contradiction with otherwise there will be a thousands of uh, conflicts and contradictions so it is not easy to assimilate that great figure which is sri krishna he is uh, above the purview of our imagination yeah that is the answer namaste mr swami ji uh, do we need to take an next question we have only 3 minutes ah uh. uh. okay so kamala ji then you can uh, go ahead and ask the question namaste swami ji namaste 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 swami ji can you just say a few words about Shri P K Vaidya, so that yeah. Today, yeah, we must pay our respect, our homage to that great soul who departed today. Shri Doctor P K Vaidya. he was the managing trustee of kotak ayurveda shala also he was the chief physician there but above all this he was a great man a great human being with a spacious heart that gave solace to thousands so he completed his 100th year in this in this world last month he was a scholar of ayurveda having no comparisons and the promoter of sanatana dharma and uh, art forms especially kathakali he stood 100% to the letter and spirit of sri pk ps varya who established kotak ayurveda shala and uh, see 
He was uh, respected, honored by our nation with Padma Shri and then with the Padma Bhushan. He was such a great man. And his greatness was his simplicity, his humility, how he behaved with the average. It's a, it's a matter of wonder if you observe. He was a promoter of Gita teachings, teachings of Bhagavad Gita. I personally knew that because when uh, Gita Swadhyaya Samiti was there in Kerala, we organized one Gita Sangamam in Kotakel. Then all the cooperation was there from Sri Vairiya. And he personally came there and inaugurated the function. He spent much time there. And I had occasion to be with him many times in many functions. And uh, some years back, I visited his house and uh, we talked for a long time. And what is to be noted in his personality is uh, the punctuality he keeps. If he says we will meet at one o'clock, one o'clock he will be ready there. 12.59 he will be there. And the appointed time, on the next minute he will stand up. So within that we have to conclude that topic. He was such a busy man. Thousands and thousands of patients with many, many ailments. Judged as having diseases which are not curable, were cured with his care. So, that great was a legend. His life was legendary. So, such a great legend departed today. There is no sorrow because a long life, full life. The Veda itself, it is said, Shatayurvai Purushaha. The lifespan of human being is 100 years. So he completed that. And completing 100 years is not a great thing. How he spent that for the society, for the medical science, for the greatest medical science, that is Ayurveda. And uh, his broadness to some patients, he, he would say, if you are interested, you can go for allopathic treatment. For this case, you can go for homeopathic treatment. If you want. But these are the treatments Ayurveda is prescribed. If you are accepting, you must follow as I am telling you. So that greatness. Nowadays, we are, uh, we are uh, becoming more and more rigid and uh, moving into watertight compartments. 
I am an allopathy specialist. So allopathy is the only science. All others are humbugs. Ayurveda is superstition. Homeopathy is uh, meaningless. The only system is allopathy system. If you are speaking anything connected with Ayurveda or homeopathy, when you talk about COVID-19, it is an offense. So you must be in the jail. So that is the narrow attitude we are seeing in the present day world. But he was such a great man. He accepted all systems of science. But he worshipped Ayurveda above all. And the scope of Ayurveda that is limitless and he offered his life for that. So such a great scholar, great Vaidya, a great promoter of art, a great human being, after completing a meaningful life, he departed today. So all our respects be with him. All our prayers be with him. And uh, we need not pray, but still, as we are in the world, we can pray Agne Naya Supadha. Namaste. Today we can conclude this. Om Sarve Avandu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Mahakashti Dukkha Bhagbhavet Om Shanti 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 Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha